Florida. With the oath under his belt, new Governor Ron DeSantis is already out of the road in Florida, announcing a Supreme Court appointment and showing support for Hurricane Michael victims. Today, we're talking with one of the leaders in the legislature. You know, Governor-elect DeSantis and I have spent a good amount talk, of time talking, and I think we share a lot of the same principles. We're also tackling the places where a cabinet member may disagree with conservative leadership. Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed says she's ready to be the squeaky wheel and fight when she needs to. And make sure that we are doing it for the right reasons, not just political um, bandwidth and making sure that we have a headline the next day, but doing it for the right reasons, I think we'll get a lot more accomplished. Education, economy, environment. We're talking about the big issues for the new administration on This Week in Jacksonville. And thanks for joining us. We're going to get to the new state leadership in a moment. First, the battle for Jacksonville's leadership for the next four years is shaping up. Qualifying for the city's elections wrapped up Friday at noon, and Mayor Lenny Curry will face challengers on the ballot. Former City Council President Anna Brochet filing her qualifying papers Friday morning. Rumors had been flying that she would enter the race. Also, former Atlantic Beach City Commissioner Jimmy Hill qualified Friday morning. Curry, Brochet, Hill, they're all Republicans. A no party affiliation candidate Omega Allen also qualified for the ballot. She unsuccessfully ran in the 2015 mayoral election. And a notable development in the city council races. Katrina Brown, who's been suspended from her District 8 seat, filed papers to qualify for re-election. She was indicted on more than 30 federal charges back in May, and Governor Scott suspended her as a result. Jacoby Pittman, who was appointed to fill the seat, is among the candidates in that race as well. And now Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced Monday and Tuesday that he would waste no time getting into his leadership role. So on his first full day after the inauguration, he toured Mexico Beach, the Panhandle community still recovering from Hurricane Michael. And that morning he was in Miami where he announced his first appointment to the state Supreme Court. Judge Barbara Lagoa is the first Hispanic woman on the Florida's highest court. The newly appointed justice takes her seat effective immediately. DeSantis still has to fill two remaining vacant seats on the bench. Here's a video from that afternoon, uh, some of the images there where Governor DeSantis and First Lady Casey DeSantis toured Mexico Beach. This is the Panhandle City still recovering from Hurricane Michael, and we were there covering that story last fall, just sheer devastation there. Mr. DeSantis pledged to help the communities rebuild. The Governor and First Lady joined by CFO Jimmy Petronas and the Florida Director of Emergency Management Jared Moskowitz, as well as the Mayor of Mexico Beach. Now, one of the governor's uh, allies could be Jose Oliva. The new speaker of the House of Florida says that he wants restrained government, and he absolutely agrees with DeSantis that environment is a key issue. I met and spoke with Mr. Oliva this week about taking on his new role for both 2019 and 2020. The first part of the job is, is very technical. It's organizing the House. And so that means that you've got to create all of the different committees that the legislation will flow through. You have to populate those committees. You have to find leaders and chairs and vice chairs for those committees. And so a great deal of our time uh, since our swearing in has been taken up by organizing the government. Yeah. What are your expectations with this new administration? Clearly this week in Tallahassee, swearing in ceremony for the governor and the cabinet and what have you. Uh, how do you think that changes what you're trying to accomplish here in the state of Florida? Well, I'm excited that it's still that we have once again a Republican governor. Uh, you know, Governor-elect DeSantis and I have spent a good amount talk, of time talking, and I think we share a lot of the same principles. I think that he understands, as I do, that uh, we have to bring in choice and innovation and competition uh, to certain areas that have that have not had it, and that in those areas where we have brought them in, like choice in schools, we've seen dramatic improvements. And so I think you know, healthcare is, a, is an area where spending has become runaway, and it is incumbent upon uh, anyone currently in power to do something about it. And so I think that certainly on the House side, that'll be the majority of our focus. The governor has been very clear about his interest in the environment and making sure we solve those problems, and we'll be 100% supportive on those as well. Yeah, a huge issue for uh, our state lawmakers to deal with that budget that's close to 90 billion dollars and what have you. Travis Cummings local to us in Northeast Florida and in that important role for appropriations. How do you guys work together and how is it that uh, just one region of the state says no I got to think about the entirety of the state of Florida? Well choosing just as I mentioned to you as you put these committees together and you decide who will be in those committees certainly those larger most influential committees you have to put people there who you have a tremendous amount of faith in and, and not just not necessarily trust it isn't about their loyalty to you it's about their loyalty to the process and making sure that they will carry it out in a dignified manner I've, I've known chairman Cummings 
Republicans from the time that we both got elected. In fact, before we were both elected, when we were campaigning, we spent a tremendous amount of time together. He's someone that cares deeply about his part of the state, but cares deeply about the entire state. And he's shown it time and again. He's jumped into difficult issues that affect other parts of the state or the state as a whole and done a fantastic job. So I'm, I'm encouraged and excited to have him in that position. Yeah, typically, Republicans get looked at as not being pro-environment. You just mentioned a moment ago that the governor uh, coming in doesn't have that view. You don't seem to have that view. How do you take steps forward to protect what is so important to us in terms of environment? It will, it'll have to happen in steps. So like like all difficulties, they don't, they don't uh, happen overnight. This is a, our, our water quality uh, issues where we have them, because for the most part we have very, very good water and air quality, have to do with the amount of water that comes down into Lake Okeechobee how that water is released when it's released. Depending, uh, we've been releasing water from that lake for decades, but in heavy, uh, heavy rain seasons, when the, when the lake gets very full, if the Army Corps of Engineers releases water at a very large rate, at a rate that can't easily be assimilated, that water then interacts with nitrogen from septic tanks along the way and other type nutrients in the water. The temperature at any particular time when that water is being released is also a culprit. And then you have things like blue-green algae. And so in order to really understand how do you solve that, well, then you have to look at the entire chain. You have to say, what can we do about water storage that won't put us in a position in a heavy rain season to discharge all of these waters as quickly? What do we have to do about those paths that that water takes and the nutrients that are in those waters that react negatively to that water so that in the event that we have to have a discharge, it won't happen that way? And overall, what do we do to protect, you know, the hundreds of thousands of people that live south of that lake that should something happen to that dike would be in grave danger? Yeah. So that's a complex issue, but it certainly doesn't sound like you view it as a partisan issue. This is for every. I don't, I don't think so at all. I, I think that like all issues, certain groups try to make them partisan. The quality of our water is not a partisan issue. Our environment is not a partisan issue. The people that most like to protect the environment are usually your sportsmen, your hunters, your fishermen. Those are usually conservative folks, and they're the ones that most look out for the environment. So it was a very Republican flavor to state law this week. The lone Democrat in the new cabinet is Nikki Freed. We sit down with the new agriculture commissioner next on This Week in Jacksonville. Tired of being a number? At 121 Financial Credit Union, you are our member, an owner, not a number. Since 1935, hardworking families and businesses have trusted us with their banking. Experience our friendly and personal service today. Federally insured by the NCUA. From the start, the C-Class was ahead of its time. Still, we never stopped making it stronger, faster, smarter because to be the best is to never ever stop making it better the new 2019 c-class family mercedes-benz the best or nothing hey jacksonville we're at sam's club with cassandra who's a member and we're comparing prices on grocery items from Publix. Woo! savings are everywhere 35 cents an ounce of Publix, 18 cents an ounce here at Sam's. You say 49%. That's nuts. That's Nutella. Showering in savings. 50 cents an ounce of Publix, 21 cents an ounce here at Sam's. That's a 59% savings. Put it in. Perfecto. It's a savings safari. Look how much you saved on only two items. Amazing. Join the club, Jacksonville. See how much you can save on everyday grocery items at Sam's Club. Greedy politicians for 500, Alex. This millionaire politician voted to raise her own pay twice. Who is Anna Broche? Right. Self-serving politicians for 600. She voted to remove term limits for politicians. Who is Anna Broche? Correct. Heartless politicians for 700. This politician tried to block hurricane relief funds for Northwest Jacksonville. Who is Anna Broche? Correct. The answer's easy. Fire Anna Broche. What we achieve for patients is life-changing. You get your smile back, your confidence back, in just one day. A new smile at a price you can afford. With the dignity and respect you deserve. Don't wait another day. Nothing is more life-changing than a healthy, confident smile. Let affordable dentures and implants create your new smile. Schedule your free consultation. Call 1-800-DENTURE or visit affordabledentures.com. Find out for yourself why Dick Gore's RV World is the people's choice. The nation's best RV brands. 
fully stocked parts and accessories store. Great RV service. And remember, if you don't shop us, we both lose. Filling your own prescription is pricey enough. But finding medicine for your furry friends can cost you an arm and four legs. It's cost a lot more to keep them healthy than even us sometimes. Revealing new ways local animal lovers can save big on pills for their pets, cutting costs in half, and protecting your pets from phony pharmaceuticals. And make sure that they're storing their medication correctly, dispensing it correctly, and dispensing the right kinds of medication. Pets RX, Wednesday starting at 5 on News 4 Jacks. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Nikki Freed is the new Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services in Florida, succeeding Adam Putnam in that role. Freed is also the first Democrat serving in the cabinet since Alex Sink left as CFO at the end of 2010. Freed told me this past week that she plans to push the envelope with her Republican colleagues in state government. You know, obviously I didn't run for this position to be the head of the party, um, but I take that very seriously. Uh, we have, you know, people from across the state um, who are heartbroken about the election results, and I'm kind of this hope for them and this light at the end of the tunnel. And so I take that very seriously, making sure that when I speak, uh, I'm speaking with all the information that I have, uh, making sure that I'm speaking on policy issues that affect the entire state of Florida, and being responsible with my voice. And I think that there is a, a small burden that I do hold on my shoulders to say, what, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? Where can we take our party uh, in the next election cycle? And really do some, you know, you know, soul searching and saying, um, who are we as a party? How do we make sure that we come up to Tallahassee and put forth good policy initiatives that are going to really impact the entire state? Yeah. Tell me uh, some of your thoughts on how to work together or in polite opposition or whatever that looks like with an administration that is shown itself conservative. But we've also seen Governor-elect DeSantis saying, I'm going to name a, a Democrat here and I'm going to name a Democrat there and, and seeming to be different than that general campaigner who is ultra conservative and so aligned with President Trump, I guess. Yeah, you know, it's something I've been doing my entire life, as I keep saying, is that my, my dad is a diehard Republican, my mom is a diehard Democrat, and we were taught um, to work and to focus on policy and people instead of, you know, party affiliation. And so I walk into, you know, the cabinet of being one of, you know, the only Democrat on the cabinet, but there's going to be a lot of policy initiatives that we're going to be able to, you know, join together as forces uh, for good for the state of Florida, but also stay true to the Democratic ideals and so of course there's going to be things that we're not going to agree upon but as long as we are being respectful to one another's opinions and say respectfully disagree with this um, and make sure that we are doing it for the right reasons not just political um, bandwidth and making sure that we have a headline the next day but doing it for the right reasons I think we'll get a lot more accomplished. Yeah. What are some of the things that you want to accomplish? I know it's early and some of the specific policies may not be there but what are some of the things that are going to be important to you? A lot of things that I campaigned on you know first it is doing the review of the consumer weapons permitting. Uh, we've now had two reports that have come out from the inspector general's offices and, and reviewing those and seeing what are the recommendations. What are some things that they saw wrong? Um, you're going to see some things immediately out of my office trying to um, curtail some of those problems, putting new policy initiatives in place to make sure background checks are done and done in a proper and an appropriate manner, making sure it's done timely because the safety of our, of our Floridians are at risk here and we need to make sure that we're doing it in a manner that's protecting them. So that's one issue. Um, obviously, water policy Policy issues is a huge concern for our entire state. Something else that transcends parties, you know, a Democrat, Republican, and Independent all drink from the same water supply sources. And so we need to make sure that we are protecting our environment and having a quality water supply for, for generations to come. I also campaigned a lot on the consumer services component, which is a, you know, half of my job is, we, you know, going over the consumers, making sure that there is uh, proper mechanisms in place to protect our consumers against fraud, um, you know, the skimmers at the gas station pumps. There's a a lot that we need to be doing uh, and looking forward to creating alternative crops here for our farmers that have been hurt so bad from the citrus greening uh, to what's happening in Washington, D.C. We've seen other states in America over the last few years they get to a point where they say we want to legalize not just medical marijuana but recreational use. Do people look to you and say Nikki Fried is our key. Uh, if she's the agriculture commissioner, we can make some progress. 
Do you get the sense that a lot of Floridians want to see that happen here as in other states? I, I do, and I saw that a lot on the campaign trail, and I think a lot of it stems from what we put into place already. Um, the fact that we have a very limited medical marijuana program, which means that our farmers, our small businesses, our minorities have not been able to get involved in the industry, have not been allowing the, our farmers to grow these crops, that we have so many patients across our state that are, are hurting from, whether it's opiate uh, epidemics, um, to all types of pain and suffering, and so they're seeing this limited marketplace for medical marijuana and they say well maybe the solution is just to open it up and make it legalized so that the patients and the people who want access to this have an opportunity um, so I'm going to be pushing the envelope um, and seeing exactly you know my first priority are the patients here in the state of Florida and properly implementing the constitutional amendment uh, to make sure that not only do we have access to the products and to the medicine but affordable access you know right now uh, our patients are going to dispensaries and they're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month and they can't afford that. You know, they already have all the huge medical bills. Uh, this is actually something that, that's now near and dear to my heart. Uh, my mother was diagnosed with cancer about a week before the election. And so she, too, has now gone through one round of chemo. And having to see what she's going through and the amount of money that she has to have out of pocket uh, to get some of these medicines, uh, we need to be working on that. We need to make sure that our health care um, insurance is covering the, the co-pays and the annual visits for these patients because we do have an alternative um, for our health care system and we as the state of Florida have a responsibility to our, our citizens. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that about your mom. How's she doing? Uh, every day is, is another day. And what we're, we, are, we are fighters in my family, and so this will be another fight that we're going to get through. Now, Commissioner Freed promised to push for a pardon of the Groveland Four, and that's exactly what happened Friday at the first clemency board meeting of this new administration. What was the case? Well, four black men were falsely accused of raping a white woman in Florida back in 1949. Two of those men spent a combined 30 years in jail or prison. The other two were killed, one by a sheriff, the other by a mob. Even though the Florida legislature issued a formal apology in 2017, Freed and others wanted a pardon issued. Well, the governor initially said there would just be discussion on the case Friday. Instead, there was testimony and then a unanimous vote to pardon those four men. So it's one of the largest expenses in the state every year. Next on This Week in Jacksonville, we're talking education. The president of the Florida Education Association joins the conversation, so stay with us. It's Empire Today's biggest sale, the 50-50-50 sale. 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. That's right, half off your entire project. You can save thousands. Empire's 50-50-50 sale won't last long. Don't miss 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. 800-588-2300, Empire Today. We weren't happy with our bathtub. But we didn't want the headaches of demolition. Or the days without our bathroom. Then a friend told us about Bath Fitter and their unique tub over tub process. There's no demolition and they install in as little as a day. They also have a seamless wall for a watertight fit. And Bath Fitter has a lifetime guarantee. What a difference. Finally, a bathtub I love. Bring your own phone, not pony. So I could have taken the bus. Bring your phone, switch your carrier. Ask how you get Xfinity Mobile included with Xfinity Internet. Get started with Xfinity Internet for just $29.99 a month. Plus, get $100 back when you bring in an eligible phone. Visit your Xfinity store in Jacksonville today. Bring your friends, bring your family, and bring on the flavor. Because nothing goes together like good times and the great taste of Zaxby's Boneless Wings with new Caribbean jerk sauce. Featuring fruity mango, habanero, and jerk spices for a flavor combination like no other. 
Try Zaxby's Boneless Wings meal, tossed in our new Caribbean jerk sauce. Or customize your meal with any of our other nine delicious sauces for just $5.99. Order ahead at Zaxby's.com or use our app and skip the wait. Zaxby's. Friends. Family. Flavor. Hi, I'm Craig Smith. Start the new year with what the New York Times calls a big, energetic, and fun musical with hit songs you'll know and an uplifting story. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We beseech thee, hear us. We've heard from the new administration that economy and environment will be priorities along with education. The Florida Education Association represents 145,000 public school employees, and they include teachers from pre-K through 12, graduate assistants, instructors, professors, retirees, students, and activists who care about Florida's public schools. I asked President Frederick Ingram for his outlook going into this new year and on working with new leadership in the state. Listen, it's an exciting time for our teachers. Uh, they are just back off of holiday break, and so uh, they are geared up and ready to go. Uh, we're hope, we hope that this administration uh, respects the work uh, that they're doing with our students. It's all about student success for us. It's about uh, having those students uh, in those high school band programs that are uh, ready to go to competition. It's about having art and drama and dance and band, and inclusive of those advanced placement classes and those IB classes uh, where all of our kids uh, have a chance to succeed from elementary school uh, through middle school and through high school because ultimately what we want uh, is to build uh, a better uh, 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 citizen and and what we're trying to do uh, in public schools uh, is include uh, character and morality and that kind of thing and so uh, that's important for us it's important that uh, the new administration see uh, and value the work that we do every day yeah what are your thoughts on this because there's a new education commissioner name the former speaker of the house and the push that he's made over the last few years is to say, hey, we want more investment in some alternative education, in charter schools or vouchers or those sorts of things. Sure. Well, I, I will tell you that we're concerned, uh, but we're optimistic. We're teachers. We believe in what we do not see. Uh, it is our belief uh, that public education is the vessel uh, that will create uh, better uh, adults. And so we have to uh, invest in our children. We have to invest in those schools. We have to invest in teachers. Uh, as we know, in the state of Florida, we have a real challenge here. Uh, at the beginning of the school year, we have 4,000 classrooms that did not have a certified teacher. We have a crisis here. And so the way to fix that crisis is first respect the, uh, the profession. Uh, you respect that profession by valuing it, by paying teachers what they're worth, by giving them uh, the tools and resources that they need, by understanding that the physical plant is important and the climate and structures in which we uh, have to do our job are respected uh, from, from, from Tallahassee through our, our local school districts. Yeah. Education and health care are the huge components, the biggest two-thirds of the entire state budget. So what can be done to respect the profession or to pay teachers more? Whatever those things are that you think would really make a difference. Well, we know that 90% of our students attend our public schools and we have to uh, devise a budget uh, that will protect uh, and enrich uh, the 90% of students. There are 2.8 million children in the state of Florida and we have to uh, deal with that on a, on a, on a level that, that is going to help our uh, communities and our parents. Our parents want uh, our classrooms to be valued because that is where you can go from nothing to something if you learn how to read and write and do basic math. And so we hope that these new lawmakers uh, see uh, the hope uh, that our schools carry, uh, the opportunity that our schools carry, and, and respect uh, the work that we do every day. Yeah. You said you're concerned but optimistic when it comes to this new administration, whether that's a commissioner of education or the new governor or the cabinet or what have you. So how do you step forward? How do you try and advocate for these things that you feel are important for the teachers and employees in our education system statewide? Well, in a myriad of, of ways. Uh, we are uh, always going to be here in Tallahassee uh, lobbying, making sure uh, that they know what exactly what the agenda is for public education. The agenda that is spoken by the people. The agenda that is spoken by our members who are doing that hard work every day. That's what this organization does. We speak truth to power here in Tallahassee. But locally, uh, we're asking all of our teachers to make sure that they attend their school board meetings, to see these legislators at home, because they're elected uh, from their localities. And so it is our job uh, to give the information to our folks uh, so that they can give the information to the communities uh, at large and make sure that
that these lawmakers know that they are to speak for the people, not for some entity and not from, for some special interest. They are, are to, to, to be the guardians of our children, to be the guardians of our school schoolhouses. Yeah. Is there a different message you would have for the folks who are working in, say, Duval County versus St. John's or Clay or Nassau? Or is it all the same message uh, in terms of trying to make a change? Well, the same message uh, is important for us because we do the same work. Uh, it, it depends on uh, you know, the lawmakers that you elect. Uh, but the, the agenda and the value system does not change. Every student is important. There is no child of a lesser God, and we need to make sure uh, that our kids are important, uh, that every single kid, whether you come from rural or urban, whether you are poor or rich, uh, your kid matters, your niece, your nephew, your grandchild. Uh, every kid uh, has an opportunity uh, to reach their highest potential. That's what we want to see. Uh, part of that is by funding, but the other part of that is a thought process that I value that kid. That kid could be your kid or my kid, and we want the shining light to be upon each and every one of them. Ingram has invited Richard Corcoran to visit schools and to talk with FEA's leadership team on issues so they can work together. Corcoran is the new education commissioner, but as Speaker of the House the past two years, the FEA battled against his highest profile policy initiatives. All right, back locally here in Northeast Florida, where do things stand concerning the number of violent crimes committed in Duval County? Now, that was a basis of a conversation with the mayor, the sheriff, and the state attorney back in October, and it's what we discussed this week following a report of 2018 data. The mayor says there was a slight dip in homicides and murders, which could be viewed as a trend toward a more pronounced reduction in violent crime. We're not celebrating that. We've got a lot of work to do, but people need to know there was a surge happening a major surge happening before we got here. It flattened and now we've got a slight dip, which means the investments and the deployment of resources are starting to work. Yeah. It's good to see that we're, again, trending in the right direction, that we're seeing some, some traction, getting a little traction, but uh, again, not a mission accomplished speech. We've got work to do, but, but consistency is the key uh, in, in this type of work. So Sheriff Mike Williams, Mayor Lenny Curry, along with State Attorney Melissa Nelson, they walk through the findings and their response. My interview with these three city leaders on public safety begins tomorrow on the morning show starting at 7 a.m. So this week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning right at this time. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Kent Justice. You can always find us on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and then online at newsforjax.com. People in Northeast Florida and South Georgia get their news from News 4 Jax than anywhere else.